Hi, everybody. Lots to cover this week on Derby Watch. Three big races from last week. I'm Jay Privman, the national correspondent with Daily Racing Forum, joined by Mike Watchmaker. He's the national handicapper with Daily Racing Forum. And, Mike, we had a lot to consider after this past weekend of racing. But let's start with the race that dazzled us the most, that being the UAE Derby, which was won in impressive fashion by Mendelssohn. What did you think of his race? And more importantly, what do you think of him as a derby prospect? I hated his race, Jay. I mean, no, <laughs> seriously, how could anybody not love the way he ran in that race? Now, I, you know, I don't know how fast the pace was, but Mendelssohn was sent to the lead. He was kind of hard sent to the lead. And he just obliterated that field, 18 and a half lengths, and um, something that we could actually uh, have an appreciation for. He got a 106 buyer speed figure, a speed figure that any buyer seems to be very, very convinced in the uh, validity of. So uh, uh, it, it, it makes it right now the, the fastest prep we've seen uh, so far this year. Um, and uh, he, I think he is without question um, the most dangerous horse that we've had to come to the Kentucky Derby out of the UAE Derby. Does that make a winner? Not necessarily, but he is absolutely the best shot we've seen out of Dubai so far in the Kentucky Derby. Well, obviously, world-class connections with Mendelssohn, with Aiden O'Brien, his trainer, Ryan Moore, his jockey. The one caveat for me, Mike, on this race, obviously, the way he won was just uh, dazzling. But he did get, I thought, a very soft pace. The announcer said that the opening quarter was in 25 seconds. Now, granted, they start timing there as soon as the gate opens as opposed to having a run-up. But you can't think that he's going to get a similar type of situation in the Kentucky Derby. He's shown that he can run on any surface, synthetic turf, and now dirt. The question in the Derby will probably be, can he take some dirt and still have the same kind of finish that we saw in the UAE Derby? But I agree with you. Far and away the best prospect that's come through the UAE Derby route. Uh, and with the connections that he has and already having a win here in the U.S. last year in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf, he certainly makes this Derby a lot more exciting to have him in it. Let's move now to the race that was run in the U.S. last Saturday, that being the Florida Derby. And Audible followed up his Holy Bull win with a victory in that race. So he obviously remains on our list. Hoffberg, who ran second, now comes onto the Derby watch list and promises fulfilled who had won the Fountain of Youth to have enough points to make the Derby and ran horribly in the Florida Derby, finishing last. He stays on our list owing to that Fountain of Youth win. So with all of that, those three horses, Mike, give me your thoughts on their performances. Well, I, Jay, I actually liked Audible's, Audible's performance. Now, I understand uh, the pace was really, really hot, and he was able to capitalize on it. But he still showed a new dimension to me in the Florida Derby in that he came from way, way off the early pace. When he won the Holy Bowl, he was involved from the start. I mean, he was stalking from very close range. Uh, this time in the Florida Derby, Audible completely shut off going down the backstretch, and I think that makes him a very dangerous horse because now he can win from anywhere on the racetrack. Uh, and, uh, you know, I know that there's been a lot of talk about how quickly he pulled up after the race, and, well, you know, st that's not great, but still, he's going to the Derby the way he would want a horse to go to the Derby, you know, in raging form of convincing victories, and I think he's definitely one of the ones. I thought Hofberg ran very well, finishing second. I mean, uh, he, he's a very lightly raced horse. Let's face it, all of these horses, almost all of these derby horses are very lightly raced, but he's more lightly raced than most. He was only making his third career start and only his second start this year and only his first start since a maiden victory. And I thought he ran very well, finishing second in the race. I liked him in the race. I think he's got, uh, you know, a lot of room to improve. Uh, and I think he's going to be a very dangerous horse down the road. Uh, as for promises fulfilled, I mean, you know, it's this is uh, an example of Derby fever. I mean, you know, who would want a horse to go into the Kentucky Derby off a 35 and a half length defeat and earning a buyer speaker of 47? Well, people that want to participate in the Derby and have a horse who has enough points to do it. But, you know, that performance was was hideous. And, uh, you know, I just, you know, it's not the way you want a horse going into the Derby. You know, to elaborate a little more on Hofburg, Mike, uh, as you mentioned, lightly raced, only his third start. I really liked his race from this standpoint. There were a couple points in the race where he maybe ran into a bit of traffic and he had to sit and then advance a little more and sit again and then finish the race off. And I thought he did all those things really well. He was second best on the day. He wasn't beating Audible, 
But I thought the maturity that he showed for a horse only making his third start is really going to serve him well down the line. And when you get a guy like Bill Mott running a horse like that in the Florida Derby and then having the horse run well, it tells you uh, that th this horse is obviously very well thought of by his connections. Uh, let's finish up our recap of last weekend's races with the win in the Buridan Stakes by Gronkowski. This was the final leg of the European Road to the Derby Series. It carves out a spot to a horse who earns the most points in that series. Gronkowski is the horse who will represent uh, the European Road to the Derby. But Mike, to me, this is a real lark. He's never run on dirt. Uh, the race that he won the other day on synthetic, a straight mile at a small racetrack, it couldn't be a bigger contrast compared to what he's going to have to do in the Kentucky Derby. And to me, uh, he's he's not a, a, a main player by my way of thinking. What about you? Well, you know, all the points you make, Jay, are, are completely valid. And on top of all of that, you're going to take the worst of it price-wise because he's named after the very popular tight end for the New England Patriots. I don't know if he's going to play this year, but he's named after uh, Rob Gronkowski. And, and so, you know, he's going to take – he's going to get a lot money that he just shouldn't get is one of the weirdest bet races every year in America anyway. But when you got a horse named Gronkowski in it, he's, he's going to be uh, maybe as low as half the price he probably should be just because of his name. So if you'd like him, you're going to take the worst of it anyway. And maybe uh, by contrast, if you don't like him, there might be a couple of points higher in the wind pool for some of the horses that we consider to be the better contenders for the Kentucky Derby. Well, that is our look at last week's races. It impacted the Derby Watch Top 20 for this week. Stay tuned here at DRF.com for a preview of all the big races coming up this weekend. And there's a lot of them. For Mike Watchmaker, I'm Jay Privman. Thanks for watching.